Good day to all our listeners. Welcome to the Leeward Islands District Devotional for today. I am Hansel Manners of the Nevis Circuit. Let us now listen to the hymn, One More Step Along the Road I Go. today is a gospel according to Luke chapter 18 verses 9 to 14 the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector and my theme is which way to God let us pray God of grace we open our hearts minds and soul to worship you we thank you that today we dwell in your kingdom and live in your presence. We thank you that as we join together in this act of devotion, we join with all Christians across the world to glorify your name. Come, be with us, inspire us, and lead us in our time together. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now the reading of our text for today. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing afar off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. In this parable, Jesus tells a story of two people who came to the temple to pray. 
On the one hand, there was a Pharisee, a member of the religious group that emphasized personal piety or righteousness and made a point of observing the over 600 rules laid out in the Jewish law. As a strict observer, he was expected to be at the temple three times a day, morning, noon, and evening. And he saw it as his duty to be there. The Pharisees made a show of their religious observances, so he came with a strong motivation to impress. On the other hand, there was another person who came to the temple, one who was at the other end of the spiritual spectrum of the class system, a tax collector. The tax collectors were authorized to collect taxes from the common people by the rulers of Israel, the Roman rulers of Israel at the time. But they often abused the authority and collected more than was due and kept the excess for themselves. They were therefore a despised group. So this tax collector could have come to the temple for many reasons. Maybe he was feeling the burden of his dishonesty and guilt. Maybe he felt the need to draw closer to God. When we compare the prayers of these two, however, we note some interesting things. The text describes the Pharisee as standing by himself, maybe because he considered himself special, or because the common people didn't feel comfortable approaching him or being too close to him. He doesn't admit of any sin or ask God for help, mercy, guidance, or strength or forgiveness. Instead, he praises himself. In fact, in his prayer of just over 30 words, he mentions himself five times. I thank you for making me special. I am not like other people. I fast tw twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income, and so on. His prayer is centered more on himself than on God. Maybe a good man in fulfilling his civic duties and being a good citizen, but trusting in his own righteousness, he went down the wrong road. On the other hand, the tax collector's prayer showed evidence of anguish, of repentance and humility. As if afraid to approach God, he stood afar off and smote his breast in agony over his sinful life. He identified himself as a sinner and asked God for mercy. According to the story, God commended him and cited him as an example of how to approach God. The Pharisee put down the tax collector, but God lifted him up. The tax collector went home justified, having made right with God and having his sins forgiven, while the Pharisee went away just as he had come. Sometimes we as Christians are guilty of the same attitude displayed by the Pharisee. We lift ourselves up and make, others look, make ourselves look good by comparing ourselves to others. We not only list our good points and highlight the faults and weaknesses of others, and this is a, a ploy which is often employed by those competing for political, political office. Sometimes we attempt to lift ourselves up by pushing others down, hoping that the spotlight on their shortcomings and faults will burnish our own image and make us look good. There are many lessons that we can glean from this parable. It reminds us that we should not attempt to come to God trusting in ourselves and our own abilities and virtues, as a Pharisee appeared to do. We learn too that whatever attributes and gifts we enjoy, they are not of our own doing. Paul taught in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, and I read, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. 
We sometimes fall into the trap of comparing ourselves with others rather than comparing ourselves with Jesus Christ. Of course, when we compare ourselves with wicked people, we look pretty good. But when we compare ourselves to better people, people who are more devout, more caring, more kind and loving, we are humbled by the comparison. Comparing ourselves with others, therefore, is no way to establish our own righteousness. When we put trust in ourselves, we look at things outwardly rather than at the heart. The Pharisee was so taken up with himself that he overlooked the fact that he was showing self-centeredness and pride. The tax collector presented himself to God just as he was. No pretense, no dressing up. His attitude would remind us of the hymn, Just as I am, without one plea, O Lamb of God, I come to thee. We learn too that no one can truly pray if filled with pride. No one who despises others can truly pray. In prayer, we do not attempt to lift ourselves up and boast, but rather we recognize that we are, in the words of this quote, one of the great army of sinning, suffering, sorrowing humanity, all kneeling before the throne of mercy. When we set ourselves beside the life of Jesus and beside the holiness of God, all that is left for us to say is, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I'm reminded of this quote from Charles Simeon, a 19th century preacher and evangelist, and it reads, Never are you higher in God's esteem than when you are lowest in your own. How then do we see ourselves when we approach God in prayer? How do we regard ourselves before God and other people? As self-righteous do-gooders who look down on others, or as ones who are penitent for wrong done? And how will we go home after praying to God? It all depends on course, of course, and how you came in the first place. No matter what your sin may be, how unworthy you may feel, there is mercy for those who humble themselves, repent and confess their sins before God and ask for mercy. And when we recognize the extent of our own sinfulness and realize by the, by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven, we can then be forgiving of others. The parable helps us to fathom the depth of God's mercy. When a sinner comes to God as a sinner, asking for mercy, God instantly forgives. May the lessons of this parable be our guide as we reflect on the way we come to God, not only in prayer, but in life. Amen. And now the benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.